Good morning, good morning. It's good to be with you again today, this morning, on this lovely day. Um, as I always say every day, because every day is a lovely day, because God's given us um, a, a new day each day to live. And I've got a, the message I want to give to you this morning and share with you this morning is, I've um, <clears throat> been thinking about this for the last sort of day or so, and um, I'm not going to really sort of do like an introduction about my own life or anything like that today, but um, the message that actually came to me, and, and the word is, is advocate, advocate, advocate. That's what that's the word that was coming to me and and I just felt I should just look up a bit and pray and just find the way forward with that with that word with that message and so um as I've been looking at it um the word advocate I was looking at it and and Christ is our advocate Christ is our advocate and it's just so good to know that and to see that and as we look in the word and and find that out and um I was just looking at uh, 1 John 2 1 1 John 2 1 um where it says this 1 John 2 1 my dear children I write this to you so that you will that so that you will not sin but if anybody does sin we have one who speaks to the father in our defense Jesus Christ the righteous one so you know Christ is our advocate and and he you know sins forbidden Christ intercedes he's our mediator you know he, he stands in the gap you know he helps us he, he's there for us and um, he intercedes, he, he, he's our mediator, he's, he, and he's just so much more, but that just, I thought that was an, a wonderful um, little, little verse to, to start off as I was talking about this this morning, and um, an advocate supports, can support, or, recom or support or recommends a plausible case or policy, so an advocate supports or recommends a, pl a plausible case, or sorry, a particular case, I should say, sorry, not plausible, particular case or policy, Okay, and an advocate. This is like I'm talking about in in the, in the world. An advocate can be a person who puts a case of someone else's, goes on their behalf, goes and speaks on their behalf, goes and shares on their behalf, just brings a case forward about them. And this this person could be somebody that's like um, it could be somebody that that's that's a care manager, um, it looks after people, and they can become an advocate. For their clients so in other words as i've been saying the message this morning is about being an advocate jesus the lord is our advocate he's our mediator but then in the world there are situations and circumstances where humanly speaking there are advocates and as i already said a, a person can put a case forward um you know can put recommendations can support can help on somebody else's behalf it could be somebody that that's in a care a care manager in a care situation for a client now you see God's call to advocacy is to plead another's, another's cause. So first of all, we see the example that, that, that Jesus, Jesus is our advocate. And, and if you look throughout the Bible, you can see this right the way throughout the Bible. But also, you can also see, because the second point I want to bring today is that, yes, Jesus is our advocate. The second thing is, this is quite important as well, is that um, we can see throughout the Bible Biblical characters, different characters in the Bible. Now, I haven't, I haven't chose a whole load of them today because there isn't, there isn't time in, you know, it, it, I wish I had a lot more time to speak. Um, but there are, there are biblical characters who put their call into action, both in the Old and New Testament. So being an advocate isn't just about the Lord. It isn't just about people in the Bible, but we can be an advocate. We can be um, standing out. We can be, um, you know, standing up for people and, and putting their cases forward and, and speaking out for them. Because we see it right, right the way through the Bible, in the Old and New Testament. God calls us as advocates to speak out boldly, even if we don't feel qualified. Because sometimes we don't feel qualified. But you see, if we step out in, in what Jesus asks us to do, he will, he will qualify us. He will give us all that we need to be able to speak out, to be able to stand up, to be able to help that person, to be able to help in that situation. So maybe God is challenging all of us, even myself included today. Um, and he's saying, you know, um, I'm calling you to be an advocate, to speak out boldly, even if you don't feel qualified. And there are quite a few places. I mean, I'm just going to look at, you know, I think um, it's about four this this morning. And I was thinking about Queen Esther, first of all. I'm not going to read the whole book of Esther, but the book of Esther, it's um, Esther 1 to 10. You can read the whole the whole lot of chapters if you get time. But I was particularly going to one um, one verse here, and I'll just read this out to you. And this is in, um, this is Esther 4.14. I'll read this out to you, 4.14, because um, I'm just taking us on a little 
a you know tour from on the Bible this morning, and this is what happens. Um, Mordecai, Mordecai persuades Esther to help. Right. So in four fourteen, for it may for if you remain silent, this is what he said. For if you remain silent at this time, relief and deliverance for the Jews will arise from another place, but you and your father's family will perish. And who knows? but that you have come to a royal position for such time as this. So you see, what happened was, Mordecai was actually, he was challenging Esther. He was challenging her to help the people. He was saying, oh, come on, you need to do something about it. You know, you're in this position to do something about it. So he challenges Esther to help the people. Anyway, just to, just to carry on from there, um, she saved the lives of her people, as we know. Esther saved the lives of her people. She, she used prayer, right, she prayed. And we can do the same. We can pray. She fasted. We can do the same. And she used different relationships, you know, as she went about what she was doing. It was different relationships she was using. And she actually even used food as well. And through all of this, something started to happen with the king. It, it was, it was, she was able to show the king about compassion and about help and about doing something for, for her people. So the king actually saw it. So, again, that's just a little... A little thing about Esther. Esther did something. She helped the people. Yes, she was challenged, but she stepped up to the mark. She did something about it. And maybe God is asking us, he's calling us to step up to the mark and to do something to help people. Anyway, then in Moses, I was, I was reading about Moses in Exodus. And I'll just quickly, um, if I may, just nip over um, to Exodus now and just read this out. And again, um, as, as I'm looking at Exodus, Exodus um the book of Exodus 4.13, um, Moses, I'll read this out to you so you can get, get a gist of what I'm trying to say because I'm jumping the gun a bit here. But Moses said, oh Lord, please send someone else to do it. You see, um, Moses was afraid, he was nervous. He didn't think he could do it. He wanted to almost like neglect his duty. And he asked for someone else's help. That's what he did. Um, but God, through, through, through uh, God's power, he changed Pharaoh's heart. And Moses was faithful in the end. He was faithful in answering God's call to speak to the Hebrews. Moses did as God asked. He did, he did as God asks. And, and, you know, God is calling us, you know, to do as he asks. And he left everything to God. Moses did as God asked. He left everything to God. And, and we saw the results. We saw what happened. I won't go into all that now. But you see, he didn't feel like he could do it. But yet he did do it. And look at the results. Look at what happened. You know, all these these are all characters in the Bible that, that, that were used to actually help people. God used them. He spoke to them. He challenged them. They, they didn't feel that they could do it, some of them. And we don't feel that we can do it, but it's not about us. It's about Jesus. And if we step out, Jesus will give to us and be to us all that we need through these times. But if we try and look into our own selves and our own feebleness, sometimes that can prevent and stop us. And so the next person I'm going to look at, um, and I, haven't, I didn't actually write any any Bible passages down for this one, but I'm just going to talk to you about this person. And the next person I'm going to talk about who was an advocate <clears throat> was Nehemiah, right? Nehemiah. Because of Nehemiah's advocacy, the walls of Jerusalem are rebuilt. You see, he did something. The walls were built. The walls of Jerusalem. Oh, it's amazing. This just makes me quite emotional as I read it. <laughs> the walls of Jerusalem are rebuilt and exiles were returned to a safe city. People came back to God. They came back to God. They came back to the safe city. How? God did it. It started with Nehemiah's heart. Nehemiah's heart was broken. And sometimes God breaks our hearts. He shows us things. He breaks our heart. Nehemiah's heart was touched by God. He wanted to ask God for a chance to put things right. And God granted this. Do we want to ask God today for a chance to put things right? Not just for ourselves, but be, be on behalf of the country, on behalf of a people. Do we want to ask God to put things right? Because this is what happened with Nehemiah. And God saw his heart. God saw what was in his heart. And he granted him that request. Both his prayer and what he asked were very bold. He, he prayed bold things. See, sometimes we, we're like little mice. God doesn't want us to be like little mice, but he wants us to be able to pray bold prayers, to ask him for bold things. There's nothing wrong with that. So both his prayer and what he asked for were bold, and God blessed his boldness. 
and he used Nehemiah as a witness. Even the nearby nations, even the people nearby, because they saw that the wall was being built. They saw it wasn't being stopped. They tried to, Sam Bala, oh, they tried to come against, oh, you feeble Jews, you won't be able to finish the wall, you know, all this kind of stuff. But they carried on building and the, the surrounding people saw, they knew. And surely that in itself was a witness. His bold prayer, and he did what, was, what, he, did what he needed to do, and it was accomplished. And then I just want to go to, um, as, as I'm reading out to you today, I just want to go to you and talk, sorry, go to, go to, go to, I'm getting a bit excited here, talk about Paul this morning as well. <clears throat> and and, and Philem, Philemon, Philemon, right? Philemon's a small little book in the Bible. It's a very short book, probably one of the, the smallest ones. And you see, again, Paul is trying to use his advocacy you know, to help, to help, um, you know, Philemon, he's trying to step in there because sometimes we have to step in, don't we? And he's, um, he's talking to him and he's, he, you know, Paul's trying to encourage Philemon to accept Womsums, Wom Womsums, a runaway slave. He's trying to encourage him to, 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 to take him back into his home. Paul tries to get through to Philemon. He tries to get through to the faith in his heart. He tries to get through so he would do the right thing. You see, sometimes we need to try and help people because some people can't always see what the right thing is. They don't always know what the right thing is. They don't always know the right way forward. They don't always know the right decisions they've got to make. And sometimes they need a friend. Sometimes they need somebody who's standing in the truth, who's standing in the light, who knows the word of God, who knows about the power of God to actually stand up and say, look, look, this is you, maybe you need to do this. Maybe you've got to go this way. Maybe, maybe let me help you. Maybe let me pray for you. Because that's what Paul, Paul was trying to do with Philemon. It was a great example of someone using who they are to speak out on behalf of someone else. You see, that's what God wants us to do. And then I've just got, um, just here, finally, I'm just talking about Nathan the prophet. And that's in 2 Samuel 12. I won't read the whole of it because I haven't, just, I haven't got time this morning. But it's about Nathan the prophet. I just want to read um, one verse, verse five. And this, I'll just read this verse out to you and I'll talk a little bit about it. David burned with anger against the man and said to Nathan, as surely as the Lord lives, the man who did this deserves to die. This, this is what Nathan said. Now, uh, sorry, this is, what, um, this is what was actually said by David. Uh, by David. Um, Nathan comes and he rebukes David, right? He comes to David as a prophet and he rebukes him. And you see, this, this, this is this. Just before this actually happens, there were two men in in a, in a vicinity in an area. One was a rich man, and one was a poor man. And the rich man had loads of sheep and cattle. The poor man had one little ewe, one little baby ewe, one little baby lamb. And that lamb grew up with him. It grew up in his house. He he fed it. It was like part of the family. It slept in his arms, and he even said it was like a daughter to him. That's what he said. And, and he came to the rich man. He came to the rich man to see the rich man. And rather than the rich man take one of his lambs or any of his cattle, he actually took the, the, the poor man's little ewe, his only one little ewe, and he actually uh, took that ewe and he used that ewe. And, that's, and then it comes on to this verse. Then David burned with anger against the man and said to Nathan, as surely as the Lord lives, the man who did this deserves to die. And that's what he said. You know, that, he spoke that out. And, you know, as he spoke, as, as, as he was speaking that out, Nathan tells David, he's like that selfish man. He says, you know, you're like that selfish man in his story. And God, ha God has seen this, the sin. God, has, God saw the sin in his life. Nathan shows the seriousness of David's sin. Because you see, sometimes God calls us, God asks us, you know, to speak, to speak out harshly. Because David sinned with Bathsheba. She became pregnant. David tries to cover up his sin. And this doesn't work, you see. And then God sent along Nathan the prophet. And sometimes we need to challenge people. We need to be, you know, harsh in how we, you know, challenge. Um, and and that's, what, that's what happened here. And all of a sudden, you know, he spoke this out to David. Nathan spoke to him. And David realised. Nathan shows the seriousness of David's sin. Um, this calling David into repentance, if you, if you read further down, it called David into repentance. But there were still repercussions of his sin. There were still repercussions, but he was called into repentance. Nathan spoke the truth to David. David repented. 
So further punishment would not be not be on on Israel. So you know, I've I've been sharing like um, I think it's you know a few different uh, four different characters this morning. There are more. There are a lot more. But I just felt God was putting it on my heart to to share this morning, and to just say that He wants us to be His advocates. You know, we're the modern day advocates. And we, we see so many examples of people that did things. They didn't just sit on back on their loins or on the sofa, but they got up as God showed them. We can't do it in our own flesh. God has to show us. And so I, my prayer is today, even as we're starting this week, that God will show us how we can be his modern day advocates. And how, going back to I started off, Christ is our advocate. He's our advocate. He intercedes for us and he's our mediator. So, Lord, I do just want to come and pray. I know I've gone over time a little bit this morning. I do want to just pray, Father, today over us. Thank you for this word. Thank you for the examples that we have. Thank you that you speak to us through your word. You speak to us through the truth of your word. And we just want to come today and just give you our lives afresh, fresh. Give you the different situations and circumstances we're involved in and the people that surround us. And, Lord, if there are people that you want us to help, if there are people that you want us to, to get alongside, that maybe can't speak for themselves, that you will show us. Lord, we just want to come and have open hearts to you because because of these people in the Bible, the, the course of history was changed. And because of who you are, the course of, of, of eternity, everything has been changed because of who you are, Lord. So we just want to come now and thank you and praise you for who you are, for what you're going to do in our lives, that you're the same yesterday, today and forever. And you never change. And we can rely and depend on you totally and utterly. Thank you, Lord. Thank you so much for everyone that's watching. I can see that that you're watching. It's lovely to see you all. And I'm um, just, just thanking God for you, praying that you'll be blessed by the word this morning. And God will use the word, um, you know, um, Lord, I just pray you'll bless your word to people's hearts and you will glorify your name through all, the, all that has been said this morning, Lord. I pray that all the glory goes to you. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you for watching and I'll be back on again and tomorrow at 10 o'clock with another message. Have a good day and look after yourselves. Keep close to Jesus. Amen.